All right, hello everyone. Welcome to Tutor Terrific. In this video, this is part two of our chemistry electron configuration and orbital notation series. We're going to go over orbital notation in this video. And this is a good continuation of the electron configuration discussion in our last video. So um, an orbital is really an address for a pair of electrons, okay? And it's symbolized with a line. I know it seems like there's supposed to be something here, but this is the symbol for the orbital itself. Two electrons can fit in each orbital, one with spin up and one with spin down. And we actually notate them like this with arrows. The spin up arrow is always listed first and the spin down arrow is always listed last. Now, each sublevel has a different number of orbitals. There are four different types of sublevels, S, P, D, and F. The S sublevel has one orbital. Two electrons in that orbital makes for two total electrons in each S sublevel. The P sublevel has three orbitals. So if we multiply that by the number of electrons in each, we get six electrons in the P sublevel. The D sublevel has five orbitals, which will make for 10 electrons. And the F sublevel has seven orbitals, which will make for 14 electrons. So over here, I have the chart of uh, the filling order that we used in our last video. We start by filling 1s, and then we go through this pattern. At first, everything's normal, 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, and then we skip 3d, go to 4s, and then everything gets a little wonky, so it's really good to have this filling order in front of you. Now, the way the orbitals are listed in orbital notation is like so. We do not use the little letters here, however, we do put the lines like so, the little orbital lines. The S sublevel gets one line by itself spaced out from the next set, whatever it happens to be in the filling order. We always fill an S sublevel if there's two electrons to fill it, one up first, then one down. The P sublevel will put the three orbitals next to each other like this with a small space between them and a larger space between any other sublevel around it. Here's how the P sublevel must be filled. First an up arrow, then not a down arrow, we go to the next spin up arrow. And the next spin up arrow. That's if we have three. If we have four, we go back to the first orbital and fill our first spin down electron. If we have five, we fill our next spin down electron. If we have all six, we fill our last spin down electron spot in the third orbital. That filling order must be preserved. D sublevel, we've got five orbitals, small space between, larger space between other sublevels around it. We will do the same thing we did for P by filling all the spin up electron locations first. Remember, electrons don't like to be right next to each other, quote unquote, next to each other because of their like charge, like charges repel. Then we'll go back and we'll shove in the spin down electrons like so in that order. Then we have the F sublevel, seven orbitals. We will do the exact same thing for we did for P and D. All the spin up electrons fill first. And then we go back to the first orbital and we start filling the downward ones. So if we have 11 electrons, this is what it would look like. 12, 13, and 14. We must preserve this filling order for each of these sublevels. Always fill the spin up electrons first and then spin the, uh, fill the spin down electrons. So I'm going to show you a few uh, elements now and their electron configurations where we're going to create the orbital notation next to them. Okay, here are the four examples for which we are going to make orbital notations. Let's start with a simple one, carbon. Carbon has six electrons according to its atomic number. Here is its electron configuration. As you can see, it's got a 1s, a 2s, and a 2p sublevel. So that means we're going to have our 1s orbital, space, 2s orbital, space, and the 2p orbitals, all three. Notice how they are not full, but I must still write all the orbitals down. Now let's start filling the electrons. Here is 1s. And I will 
put the first two electrons in it up first, then down. I'll even label them this time. Here is 2s. Both of those are filled. Up one first, spin down one second. Then the 2p. I am going to start by filling spin up electrons until I've ran out of electrons to put in. This is the orbital notation for carbon. Notice there's a whole empty orbital, and that's just fine. Okay, next we have argon. We've got many more sublevels here because we have 18 total electrons. So here's the 1s sublevel, the 2s sublevel, the 2p sublevel, the 3s sublevel, and the 3p sublevel. So we're going to fill up first, then down in each S. Notice how I don't skip to the next S until the previous S is filled. Then I will fill 2P6 up first, then the downs. Then I will fill 3S. Then I will fill 3P6, all filled up. This is argon, completely done, completely filled. That's because it's a noble gas, an inert gas that doesn't like to react with anything because it has its valence electrons, which are the outermost um, S and P uh, sublevels in the outermost principal energy level. Those are filled. We have our octet. Next, chromium. Now I'm going to have to start writing really small because now we have 24 electrons. Notice how chromium is one of those transition metals that uh, the D sublevel takes one of the electrons from the uh, higher level S sublevel because it's more stable. Okay, I'm going to speed through this first part and when we get to the interesting stuff, I'm going to slow the video down. Okay, 4S1. I do not fill the second electron in there because it's been taken by D. D has five, 3D has five, one, two, three, four, five. I know that seems strange, but this is how chromium does it. Notice how the D sublevel is exactly half filled. Much more stable than if I put that electron back over here, spin down, it turns out. Next, neodymium, ND. This is a famous magnetic substance that uh, is, well, I should say element, that is quite strong. If you ever get your hands on a neodymium magnet, you won't believe your eyes. So there's 60 electrons in here, and we go all the way into the 4F sublevel. That's because it's in the F block, neodymium, and it's filling its 4F sublevel. So again, I'm going to speed this up until we get to the interesting part, and then we'll start uh, talking about what happens down there. Let's go. Okay, guys. I'm going to slow her down for a second. Let's make sure we have the right orbitals. 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p, 5s, 4d, 5p, 6s, 4f. Okay, now I'm going to start filling these, and uh, I'll pause it when we get to an interesting part. Okay, we're at 6s now, and uh, as you can see, it's 6s2, so we're going to uh, fill that up, and then we're going to start with 4f. There are four in here, 4. All right, now for neodymium, it would have to borrow more than 2 from 6s, and uh, in actuality, the rare earth metals in the F block actually borrow from another sublevel other than 6S. They borrow from something in 5 to uh, fill their 4F. And you can see to half fill 4F would take three electrons, and it doesn't really have three electrons from any S sublevel. So it determines that this is more stable. Notice again, three orbitals in the F sublevel are not filled, and the other four electrons that are in here are separated so that they're all spin up in the four orbitals that start that sublevel. And the last thing I want to go over in this video is something that some of you in the previous video most likely wanted to see, and that is noble gas configuration, 
otherwise known as abbreviated configuration. The idea behind this is that you don't have to write the entire electron configuration. You can abbreviate it by going back, if you have a particular element you're looking at, for example, chromium here, by going back and seeing what the closest noble gas is with a smaller atomic number. For chromium, the case is argon. Now, argon's uh, entire electric configuration is a portion of chromium's, up to 3p6. And so what's often done is that this is abbreviated just as argon. So we'd write the electric configuration for chromium like this. Argon for S1, 3d5. Everyone who knows noble gas configuration knows that this stands for all of this. Argon's exact electric configuration. As you can see, this is quite helpful when you're writing electric configurations with large atomic numbers. All right, guys, this has been this two-part series on electron configuration on orbital notation. I hope it helps you. Leave some comments for me. Thanks for watching. This is Falconator signing out.